in a lot of ways, this is uh, not a terribly focused topic. And so I feel a little like the utility infielder on the baseball team. Uh, I, I, I think that there are a number of issues that are worth taking some time to talk about next Thursday. Uh, for example, uh, the deficit and uh, borrowing limits have been all over the news lately. Um, I think that this is uh, not the most important point to talk about. and in some really critical ways uh, diverts the attention from what's most important in these discussions. Um, if, if, if I were to show up at home this weekend with uh, some new painting, I can guarantee you that the first question my wife would ask me as she met me at the door would not be, well, did you pay for this by writing a check or did you charge it? The first question that she'd want to know is, okay, how much did you pay for this? Uh, just intuitively, we understand that if this is something that I was able to find at a thrift store for 50 bucks, I got a great deal. If, on the other hand, I got seduced into purchasing a $50,000 painting, my wife would want my head on a pike. I mean, the first question that we need to be focused on is what the government's spending the money on and collectively how we value that. Issues about are we going to pay for it out of current taxes are we going to pay for it by borrowing now and in the future, repaying that loan by raising taxes in the future or monetizing the debt? These financing questions are dramatically less important than the first most important question, what are we spending the money on in the first place and how do those expenditures match with our collective valuation of what's being purchased. Monetary policy has been much criticized lately uh, and I think completely unfairly. Um, I, I think that in the grander scheme of things uh, Bernanke and the Federal Reserve Board have done a phenomenal job under circumstances that are as trying as any Federal Reserve Board has faced since the 30s. If you look back at what happened in the 30s, uh, as the economy unraveled, there was then, and it's been repeated over the last three years, there was a tremendous increase in the demand for currency on the part of the population in general. Uh, in the 30s, the Federal Reserve Board basically sat there and did nothing. As individuals in the economy take money out of the banking system, the money supply drops because a dollar of currency supports one dollar of our overall money supply while a dollar in the banking system, because we have this fractional reserve banking system, will support four, five, six, seven dollars of demand deposits. Um, <clears throat> as this dramatic increase in the demand for currency has occurred over the last three years, the Federal Reserve has moved in incredibly aggressive ways to increase the monetary base. And if you look at measures of the size of the overall money supply, it has been remarkably stable over the last three years. What I find scary, quite honestly, is all the economics that I know suggests that over the next quarters or years, 
as the economy retains a more stable footing, that currency demands are going to return to more historically normal levels. And as that occurs, <clears throat> if the Federal Reserve doesn't move as aggressively to reduce the monetary base as it has over the last 36 months in expanding it, we're going to get a delayed increase in the money supply that's going to result in dramatically higher rates of inflation and higher nominal interest rates. Uh, the reason I think that those prospects are fundamentally scary is because the politics of reducing the monetary base, I fear, are going to be dramatically more perilous than the politics associated with expanding it. I'm going to be more surprised if rates rise by less than two or three hundred basis points than if they do more than that. I think that we're looking at, um, at, at, at a substantial expansion in the overall money supply, in the expectations about inflation, and uh, that's going to show up in nominal interest rates. Um, I, I think that that's the easiest explanation for why things like gold and oil and other commodities have appreciated to the extent that they have uh, in, in the recent past.